Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video in machine learning with scikit-learn. Today we'll be handling one of the major topics in machine learning that is pre-processing. Now pre-processing is a very important part of any machine learning modeling as since the efficiency of the model totally depends on how good the pre-processing steps have been taken to parse and clean the data. Now heading on to the content of the video, we'll be handling what is pre-processing today. Scaling, normalization, categorical encoding and missing values handling. So let's get started. Now pre-processing is a part of machine learning in which one needs to parse and clean the data because the, the, the pre-processing is directly related to the performance of the model. Now since most of the model cannot work as efficiently if it's having a different or not so clean values inside it, so one needs to face much more time in pre-processing. And it has been true that a data scientist spends 80% of his time in data pre-processing than in modeling. So as you can see, data pre-processing is one of the very major important steps. Now what happens is the data that we get from a real life scenario is not accordingly to the model and through the way it's, it's needed to be fed or it's not always clean and according to the value. Most of the times it have a lot of noises and a lot of things. So we need to handle them according to the same. In this video, we'll be using a subclass of scikit-learn in pre-processing. That is pre-processing. Okay. So we'll just import that one specific class from scikit-learn as the pre-processing. Now coming on to the first topic that is scaling the value. Now, what happens is when you have multiple attributes or features in a data, it's not necessary that all of them will be in a specific range. For example, if you have a data set which is having in a range of zero to one and another feature which is in range of zero to thousand. Now, the, by the time you feed that data to the model, it creates a changes in the performance of it according to which we need to scale down it's recommended to scale down most of the features or the data in a specific range so for that we use scale now scaling can be done between a specific range defined or usually done with a range of 0 to 1 normally so we are importing the numpy library and this is the two dimensional array that i have defined for it so let's run this. Now my, my array is defined and let's feed preprocessing.scale is the function that we want to use and run this. Now after scaling, what happens is the maximum value through which we have done is now being scaled. It's in the range of minus one to one, not more than that. Now what happens is the main reason, another main reason of scaling the, the values is to have a minimum mean and minimum standard deviation. Now as we do the scaling, the mean becomes zero and so does the standard deviation becomes one. That is minimum and very much perfect according to the statistics of a data. Now, for an example, if within one range, if I'm having a matrix, which is having some very different range of values, and I want to scale it down to a specific level. Now, what will I do is that I'll set a range equivalent to the one of the real data. That is zero being my minimum value and one being my maximum value. According to that, I feed the data and 
preprocessing inside it I use a function known as min max scalar now once I call the instance of a min max scalar to a variable what I do is that I use a fit transform method inside it so what happens is my 15 becomes value of 1 followed by 44 becomes the least value of 0 normalization now normalization is a very important concept since the way the data is fed into the model is usually in the form of an array or as a part of a vector now converting a scale value to a unit vector is known as normalization now if i want to normalize a data I'll simply define the x value and inside preprocessing I'll be calling normalize followed by the norm form of L2. Now once I normalize the data the labeling or the normalization method automatically encodes the data according to the best vector situated for it that is normalization. Coming on to the next topic is conversion of categorical values encoding the categorical values. Now what happens is your machine learning model cannot take an input of a string. So in most of the cases for example if you have a binary definition of a feature male female or a value of a feature as a string it cannot be fed directly to the model based off if it's a classification or a categorical value now for example let's take an example of ordinal encoder and in this one what we are doing is we are taking a list of list inside it we have male and female we have the us and the euro this example is taken for the shoe number and for male it's 42 and for female it's 36 now this is an example of the shoe, shoe size of a male in US and a female in Europe according to which this is the category in which we have divided it now it cannot be directly fed to the model as we have for that what we do is that we have to convert the data in such a way that it gets the value encoded now the categories that we have done is the automatic since we are not passing any explicit parameters to it when we run this and the computer or the or the model has automatically defined a specific number or the model encodes automatically a specific value for that and once that is done when we fit the values to the same and then we try to give it an example of how it will encode the same what he what here what happened is the male is taken as a zero female as one us is taken as one europe as zero and this is 42 is taken as one 36 as zero now that's pain because of if we feed female us and 36 that being a female of us having a shoe number of six how will we encode that the array that we get according to it is 0 1 0 so it has converted according to it that female is representing as 0 us representing as 1 and 36 representing as 0 now this is one of the basic example of categorical encoding what happens is in most of the features the categorical encoding is not as one of the best suited example now, for example if you have three label of encoding and your label encoder defines it as 0 1 and 2 now there's a certain chance that the model of your machine learning might understand 0 1 2 as a vector value instead of a categorical data now to overcome that kind of situation 
we use a different kind of encoding that is known as one hot encoding. We'll be looking at that in the next continuous classes for this. Thank you.